Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of General Dennis L. Vi, Commanding General, U.S. Army Material Command, welcome to Redstone Arsenal for the promotion of Brigadier General Theodore C. Harrison III to Major General. We welcome all family and friends who have traveled to take part in this time-honored tradition. Please stand for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the playing of honors and for the national anthem sung by Staff Sergeant Richard Scarlett. as Reverend Lawrence Harrison, brother of General Harrison, provides us with the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth and giver of all good things, we offer you thanks and praise for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us and upon this nation. We thank you for our sovereignty, our freedom, and the protection you have provided these United States of America through the dedicated service of our armed forces, men and women, over the past 238 years of our nationhood. Today, we gather together to recognize and uphold the dedication and service of one of these military servicemen to his God and country, Major General Theodore Cortland Harrison III. And as we give thanks for his 33 years of commissioned service, we ask for your continued blessing and protection over him as he now attains the rank of Major General and assumes new responsibilities and risks associated therewith. May your sovereign hand continue to be upon him. Give him the wisdom and grace needed to faithfully accomplish the duties entrusted to him as a general officer. May your grace and favor also be upon those who serve alongside him, his aides, office staff, travel detail, and any others who assist General Harrison in the execution of his responsibilities. Bless, we pray, his family as well. Give them understanding, patience, and an extra measure of grace throughout the remaining tenure of General Harrison's military service. And finally, as we approach the anniversary of our independence, give us all 
a deep reverence and gratitude for the blessings you have bestowed upon us as a nation and an understanding of the meaning of the phrase, one nation under God. All this we ask through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to this special occasion marking the promotion of Brigadier General Theodore C. Harrison III to Major General. We are honored to have Brigadier General Harrison's family, special friends, and distinguished guests with, with us today. We would especially like to welcome Miss Wendy Harrison, wife of Brigadier General Promotable Theodore C. Harrison III. Specialist Ian Harrison, son of General Harrison, currently in the Special Forces Qualification Course. And his guest, Miss Diana Pachon. Miss Maria Harrison, daughter of General Harrison. Miss Julia Harrison, mother of General Harrison. Reverend Lawrence Harrison, brother of General Harrison. And Miss Emma Harrison, niece of General Harrison. We'd also like to welcome our other distinguished guests, General Dennis L. Vi, Commanding General, U.S. Army Material Command, Command Sergeant Major James Sims, U.S. Army Material Command, Command Sergeant Major, Mr. Troy Trulock, Mayor of Madison, Alabama, Lieutenant General Patricia McQuistian and her husband, Colonel Retired Leif Johnson, Ms. Robin Mann, wife of Lieutenant General David Mann, Commanding General, Space and Missile Defense Command, Mr. Joe Fitzgerald, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for North Alabama. Mr. John Nerger, executive deputy to the commander, U.S. Army Material Command. Mr. Ronnie Cronister, executive deputy to the commander, Space and Missile Defense Command. Major General Gus Perna, U.S. Army Material Command, G34, and his wife, Susan Perna. Major J General James Mark McDonald, Commanding General, U.S. Army Security Assistance Command, and his wife, Connie McDonald. Major General James Richardson, Commanding General, Aviation and Missile Command. Major General Ole Knudsen, Program Executive Officer, Programs and Integration, and his wife, Elizabeth Knudsen. Mr. Dale Strong, Chairman, Madison County Commission. We would also like to welcome all our friends from industry and all other general officers, senior executive service members, officers, non-commissioned officers, soldiers, civilians, and all other distinguished guests in attendance today. Thank you for joining us. We also want to thank the Arsenal Brass Quintet, led by Sergeant First Class Alan Harold, for providing today's musical selection. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to present General Dennis L. Vi. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. What, a, uh, what a great day. And uh, as I look out, Ted, as you look out this morning, and Wendy, thank all of you. I know they're deeply appreciative of you assembling so quickly uh, on such short notice here during the 4th of July week, uh, in fact, the 3rd of July, to witness this wonderful ceremony. Uh, it's a very special event for this family. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Uh, and since this is a general officer promotion, it reminds me of a story that I once heard about a newly promoted Brigadier General who happened to be traveling down a muddy road in World War II in France uh, in his Jeep. And he was sitting in a passenger seat and enjoying the view when they came across another Jeep that happened to be stuck in the mud. Standing beside that Jeep was a red-faced Major General. Uh, so the Brigadier General told his driver to stop, and sheepishly he looked at the Major General and said, Sir, is uh, your Jeep stuck? <laughs> nope, replied the Major General, tossing him the keys. Yours is. <laughs> so Ted, with today's promotion, you gain a little bit more privilege and status. But just remember when you pass another Jeep along the way. I want to take a moment, I know they've already been recognized, but all of our distinguished guests, 
uh, general and flag officers who are here today, our members of the senior executive service, our command sergeant majors, our chief warrant officers, our soldiers and civilians, thank you all for being here. I always want to recognize our mayor, Mayor Troy Trulock, who's at every event. I don't know how you do it. Um, and uh, just wonderful to have you here. And the best civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Joe Fitzgerald, who is wonderful to have you both. Please give us a round of applause for all the folks. The presence of so many senior leaders here today and many distinguished guests from our community, I think is a true testament to the kind of soldier and army leader uh, we are promoting to Major General today. Uh, again, already to the uh, Sergeant First Class Hurl and the, uh, the Arsenal Brass Quintet, again, thanks so much for honoring us with the music this morning for the ceremony. Uh, continue to talk about how many performances, and you know this is just the beginning for them for the 4th of July weekend, and one that wasn't even planned a week ago. Uh, but they responded, they always sound great. Uh, thanks for providing a special touch with music. Uh, to Staff Sergeant Scarlett for uh, another wonderful rendition of our national anthem. Uh, to Ted's brother, Reverend Lawrence Harrison, a wonderful prayer driving all the way from Rolette, Texas, to be here today. Thank you for your blessing today, for your brother, for your family, uh, and on this promotion, and certainly as you spoke about as we enter into the 4th of July weekend. Thank you for, for being here. And to all of our protocol staff, uh, volunteers, who um, are coordinating and supporting today's ceremony, who had to do so also on short notice, but they do this so well and so quickly you don't even see that's a challenge to put these together. They're so professional all the time. Please join me in recognizing all the folks involved in the ceremony. <laughs> to Ted's wife, Wendy, of 30 years. Again, to their son, Ian, who's able to be here, to be able to get away from the course for a little bit of time. Uh, to his guests, uh, Diana, thank you for being here. To the daughter, Maria. Uh, who will be a freshman next year at Huntsville High School. Congratulations to all of you because you certainly made this day possible uh, through your love and support of your husband and dad. Unfortunately, other two children, Andrew and Matthew, weren't able to be here today, but I'm certainly very proud and, and thinking of their dad today. Ted's mother, Ma'am, it's wonderful to see you, Ms. Julie Fenwick Harrison. Good to see you again. As I said on very short notice, it's wonderful to have you here today as well. We travel from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, and Ted's brother, as I mentioned before, and his daughter, Emma, again, for being here as well. To all of you, thank you for the support you've shown Ted uh, throughout his 33-year career. We know he wouldn't be where he is today with all of you. Please join me in recognizing this wonderful family. <laughs> now, I don't have to tell those of you here today what a big deal it is to be promoted to Major General. Uh, of, the Army, of the more than 82,000 officers serving in our Army today, only 116 are Major Generals. In fact, the Army only selected 31 officers from Major General during the last promotion board. So why did our Army decide to promote Brigadier General Ted Harrison? Well, it'd be uh, significantly challenging for me to detail this 33 years of service uh, to our Army in the next few minutes. But I do want to mention a few highlights to illustrate the professional caliber, professional character of the General Officer we're about to promote. First and foremost, Ted Harrison comes from a family with a tradition of service. His father, Theodore Harrison Jr., who passed away in 2012, served for two years in the United States Air Force. And his grandfather, retired Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Fenwick, served as a chaplain in the U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II and later in the U.S. Air Force. 
Ted will tell you that the most important influence in his life, his role model, was his father. He taught him accountability, discipline, the value of hard work, and especially that the easy way is not often the best way. And I'm sure that his father's looking down today, very proud of his son, as he's about to be promoted to major general and smiling with pride. Ted, Ted carried his father's advice with him when he left home to attend college at Virginia Tech, his father's alma mater, where he says he learned the basics of leadership by balancing the competing priorities of rigorous academics. Performing with the regimental band, you were the band leader, if I remember correct, bandmaster, and serving team AMC, did you all hear that? And then serving with a very demanding uh, Corps of Cadets. He graduated as a distinguished military graduate, was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Air Defense Artillery Branch. A few years later, Ted met Wendy while they were on leave to Illinois from Fort Bragg. And it didn't take him long, as he tells me, to know that Wendy was the one. They went on three dates that week. And later she traveled to Fort Bragg with Ted's parents for a brief weekend visit. And a month later, Ted proposed doing a Virginia Tech football game. You probably don't remember the score of that game or whoever you were even playing. <laughs> but when Ted his side, uh, Brigadier General Harrison went on to have a distinguished career. He was an Air Cavalry Troop Commander with the 12th U.S. Cavalry at Fort Hood, Texas. And he commanded Lima Army Tank Plant in Lima, Ohio the 410th Contracting Support Brigade at Fort Sam Houston, Texas, and he was the second commanding general of the Expeditionary Contracting Command here at Redstone Arsenal. Ted also has held key staff positions during his career, including service as the Chief of Staff for the Joint Contracting Command in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Director of Procurement Operations for Iraq and Afghanistan in the Office of the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Procurement and Director of the National Contracting Organization for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And now as the Commanding General of the Army Contracting Command, Brigadier General Harrison oversees a budget of $450 million and over 7,000 military, civilian, and contractor personnel. ACC provides contracting for everything our warfighters need, managing an average of 246,000 contractual actions annually and directing one of every six dollars that our government spends on contracts. That's an incredible responsibility and uh, Brigadier General Harrison handles it very well. Now that's an impressive record of achievement and I cannot think of a more qualified leader to be promoted to Major General today. So Ted, on behalf of all your teammates at Army Materiel Command and the Army Contracting Command, congratulations on your well-deserved promotion to Major General. Linda joins me in wishing you and Wendy all the very best for much continued success. I want to thank all of you once again for taking time out of your schedules to be here and honoring this great family today. Uh, I know Ted and Wendy are deeply appreciative. And as you begin to prepare for the 4th of July weekend as we celebrate our nation's freedom, uh, please enjoy that and reflect and remember those who are deployed in harm's way who will not be able to be home with their families during this weekend. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers, as, I, as will I. So if this family will join me, Wendy, and we'll get on with promoting this officer from Brigadier General to Major General. Again, thank you for attending. Army Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated during the promotion ceremony. <clears throat> Brigadier General Harrison will now have his family assist with pinning on his Major General's insignia. Would Julie, Wendy, Lawrence, Emma, Ian, and Maria Harrison please come forward.
The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Brigadier General Theodore C. Harrison III. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibilities, Brigadier General Harrison is promoted to Major General, effective 25 June 2014. General Harrison's wife and mother will affix his Major General soldier straps to his Army service uniform coat. General Harrison's brother and niece will place the Major General's insignia on his shirt. Harrison's daughter will hand him his beret with Major General rank pinned on the front. Every promoted soldier reaffirms their commitment to serve their nation as members of the armed forces. General Vi will now administer the oath of office to Major General Harrison. I, Theodore C. Harrison III. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. In the grade of Major General. In the grade of Major General. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I bear true faith. That I bear true faith. And allegiance to the same and allegiance to the same. And that I take this obligation freely. And that I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. <coughs> discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office. Of the office. I'm about to enter. I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you our newest Major General of the United States Army, Major General Ted Harrison. Who are you? Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of honors for Major General Harrison.
and gentlemen, please be seated. Specialist Harrison, would you please come forward to assist your father with the general officer flag on casing? The Army authorizes individual flags to those who warrant them by virtue of their office or rank. The United States Army has incorporated the use of flags to signify the presence of a general officer. This flag will be present at all official functions and will be visibly displayed in the Major General Harrison's office. Command Sergeant Major Puig will now uncase the flag and Major General Harrison and his son Specialist Harrison will unfurl it. Thank you, Specialist Harrison. <laughs> Major General Harrison, we invite you to address the audience. Well, I don't, I don't think I could top that in a million years. Good morning, everyone. General Vi, Mr. Joe Fitzgerald, Mayor Trulock, General McQuistian, and also uh, Colonel Johnson, Mr. Nerger, fellow general officers, members of the Senior Executive Service, Command Sergeants Major, soldiers, civilians, ACC teammates, Team Redstone, family and friends. Thank you for coming today on extremely short notice and for taking the time out of your very busy schedules to be here with my family and I. I especially want to thank General Vi, uh, sir, for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule on very short, nor short notice. And I especially want to thank you for your kind words and for giving us the opportunity to use the fantastic AMC band. Please join me in giving them just one more round. <laughs> It's a great day to be a soldier, no matter where you are, but it's a great day, especially here at Redstone Arsenal in the great city of Huntsville, in Madison County, and Sweet Home Alabama as well. And as I stated in the oath just taken, I accept this position freely. But I'd like to also add I accept it with a great deal of humility and gratitude and also confidence. I'm truly humble to have been selected to continue to serve the Army as a Major General and to lead the soldiers of the, and the civilians of the U.S. Army Contracting Command. This is a day that I probably never could have dreamed of as I was a freshman cadet at Virginia Tech dragging the halls at the, the position of very rigid attention. Or even a few years later as I led the regimental band across the parade field. Back then I had very little inkling of how a career in the U.S. military would impact my life. All I knew, as General Vice said, was that on the advice of my father, I was headed off to Virginia Tech to become the third generation of Harrison cadets there. The path I've taken from then until now has been really incredible. Looking back over the past 33 years, it's evident to me that I would not be standing here today if it were not for that fatherly advice, some great Army assignments, great soldiers and Army civilians, great bosses, hard work,
but also a good measure of luck. In fact, I'm further humbled when I think of the high caliber of Army officers, many just as deserving, who never received this awesome opportunity. And I'm also grateful because I do know how I got here. It's because of many in this room and also many others that couldn't be here today. It's because you were able to see beyond my quirks, to see the diamond in the rough. Y'all took a shot at polishing me. Sometimes this was done with a polishing cloth, sometimes it was done with a wire brush. But overall, it was extreme, you were extremely patient and understanding in coaching and mentoring me in order to be a better teammate, a better boss, or a better officer. I'm also very grateful for all the talented and dedicated people I have served with and worked for, and the numerous battle buddies who kept me grounded and also encouraged me to have some fun along the way. I do need to take a minute to thank some very special people. First, I'd like to thank my parents for instilling in me from a very early age my Christian values, teaching me the benefits of hard work and education, and the warm embrace of a loving home. My parents used to have a painting in my room with the caption that especially resonates with me here today. There are two lasting bequests we can give our children. One is roots and the other is wings. My dad's not here anymore, but I know that he's very much here with us in spirit and smiling very proudly. Mom, thank you and dad for always being there for me. And mom, please accept the flowers just given as a token of my appreciation for your love and devotion throughout the years. And next, I've been blessed with a family that loves me no matter what. It's not always easy for a soldier that tries to balance the needs of the nation against the needs of his wife, his sons, and his daughter. To my wife, Wendy, I want you to know how much I love you and how much I appreciate your selfless service to our family, to the nation, and to me for the past 30 incredible years. Wendy, to honor your love and devotion to me, our family, and also to several four-legged family members along the way, I have made a donation on your behalf to the Warrior Canine Connection. <laughs> and to my children, Andrew and Matt, who could not be here today, and Ian and Maria, who are with us, I want you to know how proud I am of each of you. You're my greatest blessing. Thanks for sharing your dad with the Army. And Ian, thanks for taking a break from the Q course, along with the snakes, the swamps, and the ticks, and to drive from Fort Bragg. And also a special thanks to his girlfriend, Dayana, for making the drive with him. This time, I'd like to present Ian, Maria, and Dayana. It's just a small gift and appreciation for your presence here today. To my brother Lawrence and sister Liz, who was unable to be here, thanks for your encouragement and support all these years. Lawrence, I especially want to thank you for making the trip, along with Emma, to be able to share this day with us and honoring me with your blessing and wonderful invocation. Both of you, please accept these tokens of my affection. To the numerous friends and colleagues as far back as St. John's International School in Waterloo, Belgium, where I went to high school, to Lyme, Ohio, to Italy, Washington, D.C., and all manner of postings in between who somehow found the time to celebrate with me this week. Thank you for your friendship over the years. It's certainly a blessing to reconnect with old friends. Ray and Amber, thanks for being here. To my home church group members at Cove Church, thanks for your biblical counsel, your prayers, for giving me an accountability group where I could leave my rank at the door. To Command Sergeant Major Quigg and the incredible non-commissioned officer corps who has supported me over the years and led up, thanks for your stalwart example of how NCOs are the backbone of our Army. I especially want to thank Command Sergeant Major Doug Adams and Command Sergeant Major, Major Angel Clark for their friendship. They're very wise counsel 
and for not being afraid to shut the door and say, boss, I think you're about to make a bad decision. General Vi, thank you once again for hosting this ceremony and providing me your guidance and offering your continued support to the U.S. Army Contracting Command as it begins its sixth year. Through your leadership and vision, I am confident that I have the guidance and the tools necessary to fulfill the Army vision, to take the Army Contracting Command to new heights, and to keep our Army the best in the world. Our soldiers deserve no less, and our country is worthy of no less. I'm also confident because I'm not really standing here alone. You're all here with me, the ACC team, the AMC team, the ASALT team, and the larger Army team. They're all here to guide me and provide me the strength and support to accomplish the mission. And if I were to screw up, which I have done on occasion, or if I need more polishing, I know you'll be there to get me back on track. And finally, an event like this takes a lot of hard work, and especially on the, the short notice that we had. And, uh, you know, the team that was responsible for setting this up on such short notice is just absolutely incredible. And it was a team of teams. I'm grateful to Lieutenant Colonel Johnson, Sergeant Major Kincaid, Michael Wetzel, Chris Lindbergh, the ACC front office, the AMC staff and protocol especially, the rest of the soldiers and civilians of the ACC headquarters team who made this ceremony possible. Thank you so much. And thank you all again for coming today and making this ceremony special. God bless you. God bless our soldiers who serve in harm's way. And God bless America. Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the AMC and Army songs. The lyrics to the songs are in your program. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the promotion ceremony. Thank you for attending. 
We invite you to congratulate Major General Harrison and his family in the receiving line and to join them for refreshments in the lobby just outside the auditorium.